Um, this week, the topic that I decided to go over is about uh, whether or not we should use a single or a dual trigger when triggering patients for in vitro fertilization. So let me go through the basics because you need to know a little bit about the history. In order for your egg to release, it has to receive a signal from your brain or artificially in the case of IVF to indicate to the egg that it is time to leave the ovary. And from the kind of onset of IVF, the trigger that was used is actually actually the pregnancy hormone called HCG. So when we give people HCG, it acts like your body's natural LH, luteinizing hormone, because they're very similar, and it actually tells the ovary to release the egg. The good news was it worked quite well. The bad news was for some patients, what ended up happening was they developed ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. What's that? Well, if you have a high number of eggs, you're a strong responder, your ovaries can kind of go into overdrive. They start making tons and tons of fluid, you start leaking fluid from your blood vessels, your belly fills up with uh, essentially something called ascites, which is a, a fluid that's secreted from all the tissue surfaces inside your belly. Um, you can get quite sick from it, even intensive care admission, and it is not comfortable. The ovaries are huge, it's painful, you get a lot of nausea, diarrhea, you're at risk for forming blood clots, and you can have multi-system involvement with your kidneys getting weaker, your liver getting kind of inflamed, um, your blood getting thicker to place you at that risk of blood clots. So people started finding alternatives to the triggers, and then they moved into using a different type of trigger, which is called a GNRH agonist. So that's a hormone essentially that your brain produces, which is sort of the grandfather of the hormones. That's the one that comes from your hypothalamus that goes to your pituitary to tell your pituitary to make the hormone that tells your ovaries to produce estrogen and progesterone eventually, or in the case of testicles to make testosterone. So people started using the GnRH agonist because they found that it eliminates or almost eliminates the chances of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Then people started wondering, well, what if maybe we use both? Does it make a difference? And so a lot of research has gone into this, and there are several studies now that review whether or not a single trigger using just HCG or a double trigger using HCG and the GnRH agonist can be helpful. So the most important one I want to review is a meta-analysis. That's where they take all the different studies on the subject, they kind of pile them together, and then they pool the data so so that they're getting one bigger study. So when they did these studies, they actually looked at multiple different outcomes, and I'm gonna go through each one. So the first thing they looked at was the number of mature eggs that you retrieved from the cycle. So is there a difference in how many mature eggs you're gonna get? And what they found was that there was no difference in the two groups between the number of mature eggs. So it, there was no statistical difference between whether you got a single HCG trigger or the GnRH agonist and an HCG trigger. So then they looked at fertilization rate. How many of those mature eggs, when fertilized, actually became embryos? And they actually showed the same thing again. There is no difference between the HCG and the GnRH agonist and HCG triggers. What about the usable number of embryos on day three? Again, no difference. Now, unfortunately, they didn't look at the day five data and that's what we normally are using these days. But for the day three study, again, they showed no difference in the outcomes. So then they got down to the number of embryos associated with uh, implantation. And again, they showed there was no difference in the implantation potential of those embryos either. So your implantation rate, which means that you're getting a positive beta HCG blood test, again, showed no statistically significant difference. Then they looked at pregnancy rate. So that's defined as seeing a heartbeat on ultrasound around six weeks. And when they jumped into the clinical pregnancy rate, you're now seeing a 55% increase, and that was highly statistically significant. So if you were getting the dual trigger, the GnRH agonist and the HCG, you actually had a 55% increase in your success rate. And any of those of you who have worked with us at the Nahal Center know when we triggered patients that had anything above like sort of eight to 10 follicles, we typically would trigger you with the dual trigger. So we would use the GnRH 
and the HCG trigger. And this study is saying if you use both in those situations, you can improve the outcome. Why? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. The authors hypothesize that number one, in your endometrial lining where the embryo is going to stick, there's probably some receptors that help you to actually improve the quality of the lining of the uterus to give you a higher chance of implantation. That's using the HCG component. From the GnRH agonist component, when you first take a GnRH agonist trigger, the interesting thing is that it gives you a little blip of increase in both your natural FSH and LH. And if you look at a natural ovulation cycle, when you're getting ready to ovulate, you actually do have a small rise in your FSH level and taking the GnRH agonist can mimic that. So it's getting it as close to natural and that also probably has some final impact on the maturation, on the quality of the eggs and on the quality of the lining. So that's the hypothesis behind it. We're actually looking, uh, just as I'm doing this, at some patients that are asking questions. Um, and the answer is a HCG trigger is the same thing as Ovidrel, although we typically do not use Ovidrel for our IVF cycles, but we do use it in our IUI and our natural uh, trigger cycles. So uh, yes, it is the same medication. And a GnRH agonist, um, typically the one we use is uh, Lupron. There's another study done more recently. Um, this one was 2019. And in this uh, study, the authors looked at the number of eggs that were mature. Did you get a higher number of mature eggs? And although it's a really very sort of uh, low key result, um, they did show that there was a higher number of mature eggs when you use the dual trigger versus the single trigger. This is from the Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Um, and the study involved uh, patients that were doing IVF um, they had 137 patients that had a standard um, HCG trigger and a dual trigger and they looked at all of those and then compared the ones in the that had the standard trigger against their own cycle when they did the dual trigger and showed with the dual trigger they got one more egg. So just a little bit of a hint of egg number. There's yet another study done in reproductive biology and endocrinology. And in that study, it was quite interesting. So 427 completed cycles with fresh embryo transfer. And they looked at women that actually had diminished ovarian reserve. So now instead of taking the patients that are the super high responders, where we worry about them and are concerned that they may develop this ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, they said, well, hey, maybe if it's good for them, it might be good for poor responders as well. So when they looked at it, they defined the poor responders as women that had either less than five follicles at the start of the cycle or a low anti-malarian hormone level of less than 1.1 nanograms per mil. So when they did that, they compared 130 patients who got just the HCG versus 297 who got HCG and they got the GnRH agonist. So very interesting results. The dual trigger group, even though these are women with poor function in their ovaries or ovarian reserve, had a higher fertilization rate. So 73.1 versus 58.6. They had a much higher clinical pregnancy rate of 33% versus 20.7%. And even the live birth rate was increased, almost doubled 26.9% versus 14.5%. So again, in a group where traditionally your results are really hampered, getting a 26.9% success rate for live birth is actually quite incredible. So it does look like there may be some hope for this dual trigger. So that is really quite fascinating and important information to consider because now it's extending beyond just the patients who have uh, you know, the high responders, it's actually involving the low responders too. In this particular study, they compared the two groups. They showed that they did not have any differences in their sort of demographic criteria or in their AMH levels or BMI or age or anything like that. And they, they had some real interesting breakdowns of the specifics and I wanna share those with you. So cancellation rate of embryo transfers 
15.4% in the single, 6.1% in the double, so almost one third the number of canceled embryo transfers. Implantation rate, 10.6% in the single and 15% in the double, and those were not different between the two. Clinical pregnancy rate, which I told you about already, 20.7% in the single, 33 in the double. Live birth rate, 13.1 in the single, 27.2 in the double. When they looked at the abortion rate, and this has not been shown before, they showed a more than half reduction in the rate of miscarriage. So in the group that got just HCG, they had a 37% uh, miscarriage rate, which is really unfortunate and obviously and very high, so that's concerning. But in the group that got the double trigger, they actually only had a 17.4% miscarriage rate. Now that's still substantial and obviously something we want to avoid, but considering they've cut it in half, that's very, very important data. So all of these things are looking, or at least suggesting, that uh, the use of a double trigger seems to improve your success rates in many different facets, including reducing miscarriage while also increasing live birth. And it's no longer just good for the women that are high responders. Now there's evidence that it's actually potentially good for everybody. One more quick study if this stuff hasn't convinced you. There's another study very, very recent um, just showing uh, that from 2020 actually, showing the title dual trigger using recombinant HCG and gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist improve oocyte maturity and embryo grading for normal responders, so these are not the high risk patients, uh, in GNRH antagonist cycles, and it's a randomized controlled trial. So, what did they show? They showed, and I'll just review that data with you as well. So, if you look at their numbers, um, essentially the reproductive outcome. So the chemical pregnancy rate was 3% uh, uh, in the HCG group, and then the dual trigger group was uh, one, no difference there. Um, and when they went through all of the reproductive outcomes actually in the study, they saw that there weren't any significant differences until they got to frozen embryo transfer. So in that particular study, they didn't see the fresh embryo transfer differences for any of the outcomes, chemical pregnancy rate, clinical pregnancy rate, live birth rate. But when they looked at frozen embryo transfers, huge differences. So 25% of the HCG group had a clinical pregnancy following a frozen embryo transfer versus 45.5% in the dual trigger. When they looked at live birth rates, it was 12.5% in the HCG group, which admittedly is low, so that makes me a little bit suspicious, but it was 45.5% again in the dual trigger group. So the live birth rates are much, much higher when, when they're having frozen embryo transfers, but they actually received a dual trigger. I looked really hard for another study. It was published in Fertility and Sterility, I think about a year or two ago, which actually showed the exact same thing, demonstrating that if you took a small amount of HCG at the time of your GnRH agonist trigger, that if you were doing a freeze all cycle where all your embryos are getting frozen, you would actually improve your success rates with the frozen embryo transfers. And because of that, we adopted that technique a while ago and have been using that on all of our patients. So now we're gonna be applying that to more than just the patients that are high responders. We're actually gonna double trigger everybody. The big question is, is there a risk? Well, yes, there is. So even that small amount of HCG can lead to a higher incidence of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Is it a risk worth taking? I believe it is because it looks like the data is supporting a very robust improvement in the success rates and then that decrease in miscarriage risk. But nevertheless, you will need to go into it knowing this does increase the potential for complications. So I'm gonna flip out of that. Um, the factor fiction tonight was, is a dual trigger better than a single trigger? And it is a fact, a dual trigger is better than a single trigger. So factor fiction tonight is really important because you should be getting a dual trigger regardless of your ovarian reserve status. So the high responders should, the normal responders should, and even the poor responders are showing a benefit to doing that.